What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel. It's new, and um, I just wanted to create a platform for myself during this quarantine that I'm in. I have a lot of time on my hands, so I really want to be productive, and I'm tired of doing everything else. I'm tired of watching TV. Tired of eating, tired of sleeping. I'm just tired of doing all of that. So, what I want to bring today with my channel is pretty much a little glimpse of what I'm going through right now. Even though I'm in quarantine, I am faced with a lot of um, real life problems still, <laughs> and it don't stop. It's every day, all day. <clears throat> I'm currently in a CPS case. And it's going on three years that I've been in this case. Almost two and a half. I've been trying to keep strong. I've been trying to keep positive, And I've been trying to keep forward. I've been doing everything that I've needed to do for this case. And... I pretty much have came to terms with I can't control nothing that's out of my control and I'm just allowing the process to just move how it's moving. <sighs> um, the reason for this case um, should being a black woman <laughs> and living and learning and going through things and trying to love but don't know how to love on top of wanting love but don't know how to receive it I wind up like just getting with a man that was not good for my energy and I wasn't good for his at the moment neither because I didn't know what to do with him he didn't know what to do with me and <clears throat> instead of us being patient with each other and taking the time out to learn each other the proper way. We wound up conceiving a child in the midst of ignorance and lust. And we conceived a child in the process of our spirituality. And we were fighting a lot of demons at the same time on top of attending a, a school that helped us with our spirituality. Um, I was a part of the Hebrew Israelites for about a year and so. And I went there because I just got tired of being here in the world. Like I got so tired of being here in the world. I just didn't know where to go, what to do. Like, okay, yes, wake up, go to work. Yes, make money. Yes, do what you want to do. But none of that fulfilled me. And I just was searching for something to fulfill me. And I needed a grounding station where I could really have something to build myself up with. Like, yeah, I know, you know, I'm nice looking to me. I feel like I'm a good woman. I feel like I have a lot to offer. It may not be all material, but I don't feel like I should be groomed in a certain way. I've always wanted to go with the flow. So with this school, I realized that I couldn't just go with the flow. I just couldn't do what I want to do. I had to realize as a woman, I had to be grounded. I had to stand for something. I couldn't fall for anything. And while I was attending that school, I really seen how control is the ultimate, like the ultimate power. Control is the ultimate power. I seen that <clears throat> and 
I didn't know at the time I was really lying to myself, even though the knowledge was there from the school, you know, learning the Bible, learning my place as a woman, you know. I love learning, so I'm not going to lie. Like, I took all that information in and wanted to do something with it. I implemented what resonated with me. That's what I did. I didn't really take everything literal. A lot of people take things too literal. I just took what resonated with me that, you know, that gave me that spark, that gave me that off. Okay. All right. And I felt it. So that's what I went with. In the midst of being in that school, um, my significant other at the time, he attended just as well. He brought me into the school and he wanted to get a better understanding of me, his place, and being a father figure. You know, he wanted to grow in the right way this time around. So we're going to the school faithfully. We're attending classes and we're getting the understanding of a foundation to build on the Bible. And I really appreciated that. But in the household, it was the total opposite. Oh my God. I was literally feeling like I was living with a demon. Like I felt like I was living with a whole demon and it was out of control. Like, we just could not get along. No scriptures could help us. No guidance could help us from what somebody else had to say when we would go to council. Nothing worked. So, I just knew it was something else to it. You know, it wasn't as easy as they were trying to put it. I was feeling something different than what I was supposed to be seeing. And I'm witnessing as I'm going to the school things that still happen out here in the world but we supposed to be here you know living righteously i i'm not a fake person like i'm not a fake person i don't lie i used to be a liar i used to when i was younger i was a bad kid you know i wasn't i ain't gonna say i was bad i was very active it was very active i couldn't sit still i wanted to do things i wanted to do things my way so I took that chance and that leap of faith and just following my own mind, my own intuition a lot of times, and just allowing it to guide me. And it put me in a lot of positions where I shouldn't have been in, just like this circumstance that I'm trying to get out of. <clears throat> On top of being at the school, we had to get married. So I married this man and... It was just on a whole other level. I'm like, how the heck I married this man? And we don't even get along. It was just crazy. So I just had to like really sit down one day and just be real with myself. So I started telling the school like, you know what? I can't do this. I'm not about to be lying. I can't come there and put on a fake face like a lot of them women do. I can't, you know, come here and act like everything is fine. And it's not. I wanted to follow my heart and I wanted to be true to myself. So I separated myself from that school, separated myself from him. It's been a year and a half that I've really been separated from him. And I had a lot of growing in that year and a half. The relationship was evolved around domestic violence. <clears throat> um, because we didn't know how to communicate um, his emotions still had to be expressed some way, somehow, where he overpowered me. His communication couldn't overpower me because I knew exactly, like, the things that I see, I can voice it. And if it makes me uncomfortable, I know that it matches with my emotions inside. So I just put two and two together and I say what I feel. And his emotions is like very unstable just like a lot of men from childhood traumas you know that mother figure you know some didn't have it some had it that's just how it goes and it's more so <clears throat> me being that i had a good upbringing i had the mom the dad the household parents stable I had everything I wanted 
well kept, put together. You know, I was disciplined, you know, stayed in the house. I was the girl that wanted to explore life because I was so guarded and shielded and I wanted to be free. So my life path was different than his and he wouldn't allow me to be free. We had a different perspective on how we both wanted to live our lives. So it caused us to clash a lot and be physical. I didn't really put my hands on that man, but he did a lot to me. Um, at the time, I really just didn't understand why. But over time, I really had to sit down with myself and see myself in that situation and just understand that he did all of that out of hurt and misunderstanding. And he was naturally prone to doing that because of his past. And him meeting me wasn't going to change that. That was something that he had to work on. So I separated myself. In the meantime, I'm on a journey by myself trying to find my place in the world and realizing that I didn't know where to go. I didn't know it. Like, I just didn't know. Like, I get bored quick. Like, I get bored real quick. And it's like, I've had jobs. I've went to school. You know, I've experienced a lot of things. I've traveled. I've done a lot of things, but nothing really satisfied me. And the funny part about it was, like, being by myself for a whole year, I wound up gravitating things to me. Like, I sat still because um, I kind of, you know, put myself in a place where I'm separating myself from him. I'm going through this CPS case. I have all these classes I got to do. Um... What else is there for me to do for myself? So I started working on myself. I started reading things. I started looking at research. You know, after attending the Hebrew Israelites, it was like, okay, the Bible, you know, kind of good and that, you know, not too well, but enough for myself. You know, I'm the type that just take information that helps me. You know, I can study everything in the world, but it's like, why if I'm not going to really apply it to my life? And, you know, just to know things is good to know for information. But I feel like what I got, what I need to know will come to me pretty much. And I can use it in my everyday lifestyle if need be. But a spirituality journey is what I call myself going on. I go on it. I'm on the way because... I'm just really seeing life for what it really is and learning things from the beginning of time before the Bible and just understanding like us as black people, baby, <laughs> us as black people, baby, we are, we are the true, we are the true, the true seeds. We are, you know what? I ain't even going to just say us in particular. But we started this shit. <laughs> but people in general, I'm not racist. I'm not judgmental. I don't, you know, practice any religion. I'm not with any religion. I'm just, you know, with myself. I'm just with myself at the moment because <laughs> I still can't be controlled. And as far as control, I mean control in a way where someone else sees something fit for my life and how I should run my life and how I should move and how I should be, what I should do and how I should do it. No one is running my lifestyle like that. And I had to take a stand when I started my little journey. I had to take that stand because I'm a people pleaser by nature. You know, I'm a caring, nurturing, understanding, humble and peaceful just type of woman like i'm that cool chick growing up i was that cool chick like i'm that cool chick i understand everybody i want to understand everybody so that's just me like and i felt like 
what other place to do it than YouTube. Everybody else is creators. Why well, I can't be a creator? So I wanted to start my own YouTube channel just as well. Here I go. Hey. Okay. But I miss my children a lot, you know. But I just keep moving forward because I have no other choice. But I realize moving forward, I just see my life. Like, my life is moving real slow. It's moving real slow to me. And it's like, I'm really catching up with things. I'm realizing why I was in the relationships that I was in. I'm realizing why I had the lessons that I had to learn. I'm realizing why people really are how they are, you know. It's crazy because a lot of people move subconsciously and don't understand how they move. Or why they move how they move. And I wanted to understand my actions and like, why I keep doing this? Like, it's not making me happy. It's not doing nothing for me. But why do I keep doing it? Or why am I continuing to hang with this heifer? And she's no good for me. She's very toxic. And she doesn't want any assistance in helping to become a better, a better woman, better person. Why am I dealing with this man? And this man doesn't want to become a better man. And he doesn't want to grow. And he doesn't want to do anything to better himself. And you know, inspire his woman. So it's like, I was the type that just moved around. I moved around how I wanted to move around. And I did what I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it. I hung who I wanted to hang with. Like, I had a real free life. And because of that, I have four children that are currently in CPS. I started having children young. And... They are the love of my life. When I say the love of my life, oh my goodness, I have never been in love more so than ever. Like after losing my babies, they was my everything. I woke up for them. I cared for them. I carried them. I watered the seeds to nurture them. Like those my babies. I love them. I have three boys and one girl currently. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm four months right now or whatever <clears throat> with another seed. Like, I love children. I could care less what anybody say about how many kids I have because who's, like, who's to say how many children you're supposed to have? Be fruitful and multiply, baby. I'm going to do me, take care of my babies, and do what I need to do for my babies. Like, that's it. I really could care less what people have to say. And it took a lot for me to get to that point. I ain't even gonna lie, because that's why a lot of people still do what they do, because they find routine better than um, separation, pretty much. Loneliness, you know, being to themselves. And me personally, like, shoot, I really don't care. <laughs> I'll be honest, like, don't get me wrong, you know, I like hanging with people, I love being social, I'm a social butterfly, but after I took some time out to myself to start loving myself better than I could ever love myself ever, like, I started feeding myself better, I went on a vegan diet for like a month and a half, two months, like, re-cleansed my whole body from the inside out. I reprogram my mind by not watching TV and not watching things that are dramafied, chaotic, or um, informative that, you know, things that aren't informative. I just was not watching anything that could help me. Like, I went on a real purge from letting everything go, like letting everything go. I let it all go. <sighs> but, um, I really want to bring a lot to my channel. At the moment, I have a lot to say. So it's like, I'm, I'm trying to get things off my chest piece by piece. You know, I have nothing but time on my hands. Thanks, quarantine. But I just want to give you guys real content about real life situations and real things that go on in this real world and how a lot of people are living in la la land you know what i'm saying you know i'm not a follower i don't know how to be a follower 
So, I just want to be a leader in my own lane, doing my own thing. And this is my own channel. As you can see, my name says Poetic Justice. And no, I'm not Janet Jackson. She was the character to the movie. But it was the story in the movie and the moral to the story. I'm a black woman living in the jungle. Like, I live in the jungle, for real. Like, but you know what? It's 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 okay over here in this area. But I'm out here. And they my peoples, you feel me? I can relate to them. So it's like, I don't judge. I just do me and be free. No one bothers me. When I first moved where I am, yeah, people was coming for my neck. Because I'm from Detroit and I'm from the east side. And where I live, you know, I don't think they was used to happy women, you know. So I think I kind of intimidated a lot of people for no reason. But hey, it is what it is. But more to the story, I'm getting a divorce. I am getting my children back very soon. I had to restart this case over again because the first time was not a good go round. I had to get a whole nother caseworker, everything. Like, I'm the type, you just cannot tell me anything, baby. I stay fact. So, you know, I be making statements. I be making statements, baby, and I get my justice by being truthful. And that's pretty much it. But... I want to, oh, also, I just want to, you know, bring you guys in my life, like, bring you guys in my life, like, my life is very interesting, it might be boring to other people, but I got out of that stage of, like, being a partier and being a drinker, and, you know, I do my recreational habits or whatever when I would do them, um, I was just really being, I'm really being focused on being a mother and taking care of business. That's what I'm focused on right now. <laughs> and carrying this child. Um, as far as my children, I love them. They'll be home soon. Real soon. You guys will see. You guys will see. You guys are going to see a lot. I'm very creative. And I kind of get what I want because I kind of stand in my power and I try to do the right thing. You know, I stay as positive as possible. But I'm just reaching out to people, you know, real people that want to connect. I have stories for days. So this is just part one. I want to have a long video for my first intro. I want it to be engaging, though, you know, make you want to come back. <laughs> well, yeah, man. So I just want to thank you guys. If you watch to the end, like, comment, you know, give me some feedback. Don't be no hater, okay? Because just know you will make me greater. And at the same time, I'm not on here to get judged by anybody because... You can't really judge me. You don't know me. You're not walking in my shoes. You don't even love me. So I really rock with people who show genuine and authenticity and be themselves and not a hater. You're not yourself if you're a hater. Like, and I'm just being honest because that's not a natural trait. That's something that's picked up. Like, if you do some research and study on behavior, emotional behavior, things like that, you'll get it, you know. I can give, you know, a little info here and there, drop hints here and there, but I'm not here to make people do nothing. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, I'm spiritual and I study astrology and things like that, but I'm not here to make people do nothing. I want people to do what they need to do for themselves and I'll be a supporter chilling in the background like, yes, get it. You got it. Let's get it. Like, come on. Like, I'm a real friend. I'm a real one. I'm a real woman. Like, I'm just trying to be here for people who want to be here for me. Let's stand up, stand together, you know? 
but um the moral to the oh yeah i forgot to tell you guys yeah so <clears throat> i'm gonna do another video because i just be talking but i'm gonna do another video part two just stay tuned but thank you guys for watching